This video tutorial will be on organized counting. Now, when you're counting the number of objects or events in a set, it's a good idea to try to organize your counting. And one of the or, one of the common ways to do that is to make a list. Now, it's a good idea to have that list as organized as possible, as uh, systematic as possible, so you don't miss things. Uh, another way is to make uh, charts or tables, and they're really just another form of a list. And an even more organized way is to make a tree diagram. Uh, with a tree diagram, it's very organized and it's actually, well, it's more difficult to miss things because if you miss things, and for example, you're trying to calculate uh, probabilities, then your probability calculations won't be correct. So first example, uh, John is on a game show where there are three doors to choose from. He's got door one, two, and three. And behind each door, there's two different envelopes he can select. A and B behind the first door, C and D behind the second door, and E and F behind door number three. Each one is some sort of prize or not. Could be a gag prize. And we're asked to list all of John's possible outcomes. So we could just list them. We could list uh, door number one. Uh, he could choose door number one and envelope A, or he could do door number one and envelope B. So here I'm trying to make the list organized. So this is all the possibilities where he selects door number one. And then we could go to door number two and envelope C or D. So there's two other possibilities. Or door number three and select, select E. Or again, door number three and select envelope F. Now how we would draw that with a tree diagram is like this. So this represents the start. And so there are three branches here because first he's going to pick one of the three doors. And so we could put door number one here, two here, and three here. So this, this represents picking one of the three doors. And then from each of these, he has a choice of picking one of two envelopes. So that's why there's two branches coming out from each of the doors. And so we will put A and B here, C and D here, and then E here and F here at the end. Now when you draw a tree diagram, you get the list of all possibilities uh, generally by listing them on the end here. And so we would go 1A, 1B, 2C, 2D, 3E, and 3F here. And so that's the same list as is up here. The nice thing about the tree diagram though is it makes it more organized so you're more sure you're going to get all of the outcomes. So flipping over to the second example, uh, Amra's driving to work. She knows the city well and she has four different routes to the coffee shop and then three different routes from there to her workplace. I'm supposed to draw a, tree, uh, a diagram to uh, show her possible routes. We're not going to do a tree diagram, just a diagram with these uh, three visuals here. Uh, to work, uh, from home all the way to her work. And so let's say this is her home. So she are told that she has four different routes to the coffee shop. And then there's three different routes from the coffee shop to her workplace. So there's the diagram. Now we could uh, list these as one, two, three, and four. And we could call from the coffee shop to her workplace uh, A, B, and C routes. And so here's the organized list. So we could start with uh, route number one here. And if you drive route number one, then you could drive uh, after the coffee shop route A, route B, or route C. So we could go 1A, and then 1B, and then 1C. We could do route two next, and then A, B, or C. And then route three next, and A, B, or C and then root 4 next and an A, B, or C. And so if you uh, count them, there are 12 possible ways she can get from her home to her workplace. So it says if on the first day, first of the week, she starts driving a different route every day, when will she have to repeat a route already traveled? So she's got 12 different routes. So it would actually be the 13th day before she would have to repeat one. And that's the end of the video.